SMT Nation, we are back. Nation, in today's video, we're going to look at the trends in broadband usage. Now, this is important, and we'll probably do some follow-up discussions with this. And the reason I think that's important is because we're like a broadband channel. We, we cover mobile broadband. We cover home broadband. I follow all things home internet, you know, Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T, all these trends. You know, we cover it. So we've got data that tells us a lot about the current state of broadband usage patterns. We're going to discuss that here in today's video. And the premise around today's video is, are data caps really impacting people to any type of scale? Is it really an issue? And should we be concerned about it? And the data is quite revealing. So let's kind of cover some of the numbers. I'm going to go ahead and cite Open Vault. I accessed their most recent publication and usage patterns from their data collection. And uh, average broadband data consumption is up. But the growth rate actually might surprise you. So I've got all these numbers and I want to kind of take a deep dive into them and get your commentary. You guys can drop me lines in the comments to let me know what you think. And you can obviously share your experiences with me as well. So collected from millions of data points and Open Vault kind of giving us the insight here. They're saying that average data consumption is now approaching 590 gigabits, gigabytes of data monthly compared to the previous year of 550 gigs monthly average so we're talking about monthly averages here uh so when i look at that it's it's basically kind of consistent people's usage patterns are increasing but this particular increase only represents a 7.2 percent increase and that's the smallest increase rate over the last decade plus of data collection from open vault so quarter over quarter uh, so this would be Q2 of 24 to Q3 24. Data usage is basically flat. So we didn't really see much of an increase. I think they said it was less than 1%. And then additionally, in terms of detail, upstream data usage actually is where the growth happened, exceeding that of the downstream. So we're talking about like down, download speeds versus like upload speeds, like kind of what we cover with our speed testing videos. But this is just overall data usage. So um, the way that this worked out was upstream data usage had growth uh, at 13.9%, uh, going from 35.9 gigs to 40.9 gigs. The downstream actually showed a decrease, pretty sizable, of 10.9%. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Speeds also increasing on both sides of network. The down downstream speeds increased uh, by 13.2%. And uh, I, I, I think that's great because, again, people continue to, you know, watch more high quality, high resolution playback video and do different things with their connections. Uh, and uh, so that's that's really good. Uh, so you got downlink stream, uh, downstream speeds increasing and uplink speeds actually improve as well. They improve the most uh in terms of overall usage increasing usage but they're up 11 percent in speeds so downlink speeds are now at 564 megabits uplink speeds are not 31 megabits per second i think that's a testament to cable network upgrades so comcast and charter and other telcos investing into that side another interesting tidbit super power users you guys maybe have never heard of this super power users are considered to be those that use more than two terabytes per month, they are up 24% year over year. We've got more and more power users than ever. I anticipate that number will continue to climb into the future. That trend is probably going to increase. And the overall base of people that qualify for that metric, going from 2.9% of the user base to 3.6% of the user base. So not a huge jump overall, but a sizable increase as a percentage. The extreme power user is anyone who uses more than five terabytes per month. That is up 44.2% 44 in Q3 of 2024. All right, so that's interesting. We're getting more and more uh, super power users and more extreme power users. Annual income, this is an interesting demographic. Uh, it connects to usage and speed trends. Uh, folks that make $55,000 in annual income typically are using 639 gigs monthly with 530 megabit per second speed. 
$150,000 income annually, 622 gigs of monthly usage with 713 megabits per second in speed. So higher, slightly higher usage for the lower income, but, uh, and also slightly slower speeds. And I think that has to do with like fiber availability probably, or, you know, the, the broadband connectivity tier plans, right? Being more premium, being more expensive. Those could be factors there. Last couple of demographics here, a one to two person household usage patterns can be as low as 397 gigs of usage, upwards of 606 gigs of monthly usage, speed tier at 578 megabits per second average, a four plus person household using an averaging over one terabyte of usage monthly and then having speeds averaging around 833 megabits per second speeds. Speeds and subscriber behaviors are consistent between rural and urban, so not really anything notable there. These are pretty interesting numbers. What do you guys think about those patterns and those trends? What do you think about the income demographics? What do you think about the, uh, you know, the household number demographics? What do you think about that downlink and upstream kind of comparison, right? Those are kind of some interesting ones. The super power user, the extreme power user, and kind of the way I want to wrap up this video. We've got a trend in the home broadband industry where most of the growth is actually not happening at wireline networks. It's happening in fixed wireless access. With these growing trends, right, when you see kind of the direction of the data and what it's telling us, should we have concerns about fixed wireless access being able to hold and, and, and be tested by usage growth patterns? I'm going to give you guys my take, my personal opinion, based on the like the usage growing growth rates, it doesn't seem like it's going to be an issue in the short term or even in the midterm. I don't know what the conversation is going to be five or 10 years from now. I think that question is mostly going to be answered by different types of innovative technologies, fiber circuit access for carriers like Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T. If they continue to invest in their infrastructure, if they continue to bolster their networks, they also have fiber you know, fiber to the premise in a lot of cases so they can offload home broadband usage patterns. I'm not sure if I'm really worried about fixed wireless. I don't know if that's the case. The growth pattern rate increase appears to be a little bit more subdued than it has been in the past, but I do expect it to increase. I'm just not really ready to say I'm concerned in the short term or the midterm. Long term, I think discussions five, 10 years from now, that's a little bit murkier and harder to predict or project i think fixed wireless is good for now in the short term and the midterm what do you guys think are are there any concerns that you have is there a company's network that concerns you and what are your usage trends let me know sound off in the comment section below you all the voice of the people the smt nation let your voice be heard